Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Today, I'll be making this 3D paper cut shadow box. Isn't that cool? And there will be also a little Flickr freebie. So if you want to see the process of putting together one of these lit shadow boxes, you have come to the right place. Let's get started. So this is what I'm gonna be using today. And that is, um, I found a box. This box is probably not quite deep enough, but what I've decided to do is I will go ahead and fill it up with the layers of the paper cutting. And then I will not put the bottom of the box all the way in. I will attach it somehow so that it telescopes out a little bit and then that way I'll be able to have more room in in the back it'll be thick enough you can also buy shadow box frames or you could make one I have some old cigar boxes that I was going to attempt to use but they are even thinner so this was my best option for the day was an old box I think it probably had stationery in it at one time. And I have these little slices of foam core board and it is an eighth inch thick and I just sliced it into strips that would hide behind the paper layers. And I took a piece of chipboard from, from a notebook and I created a little half inch jig and what I did was is I I drew a half inch frame all the way around the inside because that is going to get cut away so that it will you can see through it because <laughs> you could put everything in the box but if you can't see through it it doesn't make any difference I do not have any glass I do have some transparency film not optimum, but it's my only option at this point because I don't even have any glass I could cut down. I could always replace it later, so no big deal. And then I had my Cricut cut out all the paper layers that I created. So we'll be able to layer them up with the foam core slices in between them. And then in the very back, there is a piece of vellum so that when I put the lights in the back, you won't be able to see each individual light. This is the one I happen to have at the moment and it runs on batteries. And I'm not even sure if these batteries are even working. Oh, they are, yay! Uh, I'll be putting this in the back and then this can stick out and make a hole in the back so that this can be fed through and you can turn it off and on from the little switch. They have other ones that you can plug into the wall. They even have LED strips that you can cut to length. You gotta know what you're doing with the LED strips because they need little pin connections and everything. It's not a big deal. You just have to know what you need for them to work. Do a little bit of research if you want to do the LED strip, the cut down, cut down the strip thing. There are also just these little, I think this one is five feet, maybe five feet, maybe five or six, but you can get short little lengths of, of these little teeny tiny fairy lights and that's really all you need. I will put some on my Amazon favorites list the link down below the video and you can check those out if you would like. Okay, so uh, just to let you know, the paper slices, the layers, were, were cut out of this mixed media paper. It's not heavy as watercolor paper. It's probably about the same thickness as a decent cardstock. I will look this up and let you know what it is for some reason, I'm thinking it's somewhere in the 90, 95 pound range, but don't quote me on that. 
I will put it, I will find, I will find out that information. And so that's what those were cut out of because you want the little slices to be able to stand up and not be flippy floppy too much. You know, your mileage may vary. All right, I'm gonna get started on this. I am going to um, speed things up because you don't wanna sit here and watch me paint and oh my goodness, it takes forever. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna do this. We're gonna speed this up and I will be back with you in a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is cut out that frame that goes at the front of the box. Cut through all this chipboard and leave that half inch lip around the edge. And now I'm going to cut out some strips. This is some pretty heavy duty chipboard, probably two millimeters in thickness. And I'm going to cut a, like a picture frame that's going to go all the way around the front edge. I figured that cut raw edge of the box probably wouldn't look that great. <laughs> so I monkeyed around and wasted a lot of time to get these just right and get them the right size. And then I mitered the corners so that they would fit together. Yeah, I, and then I sanded them. It, it took longer than it should have. Let's just put it that way. And so those are gonna get glued on and they did through the magic of YouTube, there it was. Now I'm just going to put a base coat of white paint over the whole entire exterior of the box. And I end up even painting the inside lip area too. That's the hole in the back of the box that I put so that I could string those lights through there. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking those strips of foam core and I am lining them on some double-sided sticky tape so that I don't have to use glue because I'm just being lazy. So here I am just lining them up and I line the other side. And now I'm just cutting them back apart. And those were gonna be used for the spacers in between these layers of cut paperwork cut work paper paper cut work yeah you know what I mean and this took a minute too so here I am putting putting these on the top and the bottom of the back side of each of these layers and now that the whole box is painted see I painted the inside too I'm taking a piece of that transparency film and I also put some double-sided tape on that too so that it's not shifting around inside the front of the box. Give it a little bit of security. And now I just start layering those cut work pieces in one by one. And I did decide, as you can see, to put some spacers on the sides too. But the paper was sagging just a little bit, so I put them in there. And then there is the vellum that goes in the back, 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 back after all of those layers are stacked together. And there's the back of the box. And so here I am gonna string the lights in. And as you can see, the box is white on the inside and that is important for light to be reflected. I'm just gonna kind of swirl these around and then just take some some scotch tape and just tape it down a little bit and, and this took a lot longer than it should have as, as well yeah. mm -hmm. so dry fit that front on yay it worked doesn't that look purdy just so low so purdy i like how that came out so one thing that i want to do on the bottom i'm going to put these little felt feet so that the back of the box is even with the front so that it's not uh, front heavy. So it's just nice and flush there. And that helps it to sit nice and securely. And now I'm gonna take some of this tape and this is first aid tape. I just wanted something that was gonna blend with the box because I want to replace the transparency film at some point with some glass. So that's why I'm just using a little bit of tape here to tape the box closed so that it will stay closed because the back is barely, barely, barely on there. 
And there you have it. That is how to put together one of these shadow boxes. There are all kinds of kits on Etsy if you are looking to find something intricate for your die cut machine. But I will have on my Flickr page for anybody to download if they are interested. I will put some really simple images that would be very easy to cut out with just an X-Acto knife. You could put print out the template and put it on top of a piece of paper and then use a ballpoint pen or a stylus to trace around the edge and then cut it out with um, scissors or an X-Acto knife. So there are ways around it. If you want to get more complicated and do something uh, like this one, these can be done and are done all the time with just scissors or a craft knife. Don't let not having a die cut machine stop you. So I hope you enjoyed this process. Uh, a couple of little things that I wanted to mention. If you are using a box or a container or something that does not have a white background in the very, very back where the lights go, paint that white or glue in a piece of copy paper or something because if it's dark it will not reflect the light back it will just absorb the light and you'll only get about half as much light out of your little fairy light strand so make sure that the inside of the box is white um, another thing is if you decide to get one of the little fairy light strips that come with these battery compartments just keep an eye on them depending on your batteries you don't want to leave battery powered things like in a kid's room or something going all night. The batteries can leak. So just, I know you guys know about batteries. <laughs> I just had to throw in that PSA because I have opened up battery compartments before and found leaky batteries. And I don't know, I wouldn't want a kid to wonder what was wrong with his nightlight and go pick up the battery compartment and then get burnt with battery acid. It makes me nervous just thinking about it. Um, either keep an eye on those or put them somewhere where a kid can't get to them if it's gonna be on in a kid's room or find the ones that just plug into the wall like anything else does. I just wanted to throw that in there just as an FYI in case somebody wasn't thinking about it. I had a blast putting this shadow box together. It ended up being several inches deep. It is four inches deep. So give yourself some room. If you're gonna do this many layers, it does not matter the size of the spacers that go in between, that's arbitrary. You can roll up little pieces of paper if you want to, or you can use straws, like drinking straws. Those work out really nice as well. But just look around the house. You probably already have stuff that you could use for spacers. I am working on some new stuff, so I will be back shortly to see you all again. So I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.